Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuhal nasu abudu rabbakum, humanity, people, enslave yourselves, worship your master, alladhi khalaqakum, the one who created you, walladhina min qablikum, and, the, and, and those that came much before you are the ones from much before you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Hopefully you'll be, you'll take means to protect yourselves. Or hopefully you will become better. You'll become those that save themselves. Now this is a profound ayah for, for several reasons. Here's the first of them. There's the transition. Everything up until now in this entire surah was in the third person. الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ They believe in the unseen. They believe in what was sent down to them. There are those who say we believe. Those who've disbelieved. They, those, they, those. Everything was in the third person and in rhetoric, in, in linguistics and in rhetoric. The third person is far away. They're far away. And as a matter of fact, by the time you get to the end, the last couple of ayat where the imagery was drawn that I painted for you yesterday, they are really far away because they're out in the middle of the desert, lost and nobody can hear them. Or they're out by the edge of a cliff and it's raining hard and they're completely out there isolated. And yet from that image of isolation and distance and the use of the third person, there's an immediate switch. And instead of even Allah telling His Messenger وسلم, to address us, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ اُعْبُدُوا رَبَّكُمْ Tell them, people, Worship your master. Allah decides it mubasharatan, bila wasita, without any means in between. He addresses you and me directly and not even just the Muslims. Ya ayyuhan nas. This is a profound moment in the Quran, in the revelation of Allah's book. Allah has decided to take all of humanity and talk to them directly. Your maker is talking to you directly. Ya ayyuhan nas. Urbudu rabbakum. Enslave yourselves to your master. Imam Razi, Fakhruddin al Razi, rahimahullah, fascinated by this ayah, he says, وَقَدْ يُؤْمَرُوا مَنْ لَيْسَ بِأُؤْمِنْ بِالْعِبَادَةِ كَمَا يُؤْمَرُوا الْمُؤْمِنْ بِالْإِسْتِمْرَارِ عَلَى الْعِبَادَةِ وَالْإِزْدِيَادِ مِنْهَا فَالْخِطَابُ فِي الْجَمِيعِ مُمْكِنْ Allah sa- he, he says, Imam Razi says, that just like a believer can be commanded to better their faith. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا آمِنُوا Those of you who have iman, have more iman. In, in further your iman. The same way all of humanity, Allah is the master of all humanity, He has the right to tell them to enslave themselves, even if they're not Muslim. So this book is not just for Muslims. This book is actually a call to all of humanity. You know, you would think that the Meccan Qur'an was addressed to the non-Muslims mostly. And the Madani Qur'an is focused on the Muslim community. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, most of the time. But here in, just in the, in the introductory ayat, we haven't even heard ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu yet. We haven't heard that yet. The first thing we hear is ya ayyuhal nas, u'budu rabbakum. People, enslave yourselves to your master. Worship your master. There are three things that I'd like to share with you about the word nas that is used inside of this ayah. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah and some other companions held the view that the word nas, which is the plural of insan, uh, is actually from nisyan. The origin of it is the word nisyan, which means forgetfulness. And so by definition, human beings are forgetful. Allah Azza wa Jal had taken a covenant from them, a promise from them, before they were even brought on this earth and they forgot that promise. Fanasiya. So that's one implication of nas. People that have forgotten that you have a lord, that you have a master. Remind yourselves that you need to go back and fulfill your responsibilities to him. That's one meaning. Another meaning that com- that is associated with the word nas is actually from the verb anasa. And inas in Arabic means to be able to perceive something or see something. فَالَّذِي يُؤْنَسْ actually means the one that can be seen. The, here the contrast is between the human being and the jinn. Jinn from the verb jannah means that which is covered. You know like jannah is heaven also from the same origin because the, the dirt is all covered in jannah, it's hidden. That's why the jinn is called the jinn because they're hidden from the eyes. That's why the baby inside the womb is called janin. The womb itself is called janin because it hides the baby. And as opposed to that, human beings are not hidden, they can be seen. And so that's why they're called insan, or from that extension nas, we're from the seen. But the third implication, which is the most commonly held, the most popular view on, and the most convincing really also, of what the word nas refers to, it actually comes from the word uns. And uns is actually the opposite of the Arabic word wahsh. In other words, wild animals are, you know, Urdu speakers even know veshi janwar, right? Al-wahsh, wahsh means wildness. No compassion. Uh, uh, a wolf doesn't actually put a napkin on before it tears down the, you know, it just tears up the animal as it will. But a human being will have civility the way, the way he's gonna eat, right? And hum- animals are not capable of the kind of compassion that human beings may be capable of, even though as we've seen in a recent example, human beings can become lesser than animals. A time comes, you know, Allah says, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ 
asfal asafilin. We reduce them to the lowest of those can, that can become low. Right? So it's even below animals that they can exhibit behavior. Even animals don't kill senselessly. Animals kill when they're hungry. Animals kill when they're threatened. And when the threat is over, they move on. And when their stomach is filled, they move on. Animals don't kill out of hate. Animals don't kill without cause. So when human beings engage in that kind of behavior, they've gone lower than animals. That's actually asfal asafilin. That's why even in some places, Allah will compare people to cattle, to animals, and say, بَلْ هُمْ adal. They're even worse off. They're even worse than that. At least they act according to their nature. This is not even nature. <laughs> this is entirely unnatural. So, so in any case, these are the three implications of nas. And the dominant view once again is that human beings are compassionate creatures. That in their, or in their essence, they have the capability of showing love and mercy and compassion like no other creature. That's why we don't just show compassion to ourselves and to our family members. We are capable of showing compassion to a neighbor, to a stranger, to even another animal, to plants. We show compassion all around. We show compassion when you're walking down the street and you see a rock in the path, you remove that rock. That's part of you being an insan. In other words, humanity is actually called humanity because they care about other people. And when that sentiment, that quality is removed from the human being, they're not even insan anymore. Now Allah uses that term. He could have used other phrases, but using that term and calling humanity with this phrase, Ya ayyuhan nas, it does something. What it does is it calls upon humanity's compassion. And that's the first appeal between us and Allah. Allah is not first and foremost, my relationship with Allah is based on my desire for love. You know the Arabic word for the, the, our relationship with Allah, when we take the shahada, we say la ilaha illallah. We use the word ilah for Allah. The word ilah comes from the verb aliha, which means to be obsessively in love with someone and to rely on someone and to lean on someone. The Arabs back in the day would describe nine levels of love. One day when we study Ayatul Kursi, I'll explain that in detail. But now I'll be brief. They describe ten, actually ten levels of love. And the ninth of them is, uh, you know, ilah. Or uluhiya even. It's a level of love, not just worship. It's actually a level of love in which you feel empty and actually you feel no pain because the love fulfills it. Or you don't feel hunger because your love is filling your appetite. It's that kind of love. And the only love above that is the one that kills you. So it's the most extreme form of love that we have for Allah Azza wa Jal. And of course, we are capable of that love because we're people of uns. We're people of compassion. So Allah Azza wa Jal, our relationship with Him is actually rooted first and foremost in this attribute of human beings, of desiring and seeking love, of compassion. It is not an authoritative relationship first and foremost. It's not a top-down relationship first and, fo first and foremost. It's actually a, a loving relationship first and foremost. And that's when you get to the word ibadah.